Transfer deadline day is always filled with rumours, and more often than not, the deals won't get done. Despite you staring at the television begging something to happen 10 minutes before the window shuts. Today at HITC 7s, we're going to look at 7 deadline day deals that didn't happen. First up we've got David De Gea. A failed fax machine was the difference between David De Gea joining Real Madrid or staying at Man United. The two clubs had agreed a deal on deadline day of 2015, with De Gea set ahead of the Bernabeu in a £29 million deal that included Keylor Navas going the other way and taking De Gea's place at Old Trafford. The Spanish goalkeeper had long been a target for Real Madrid, who were on the lookout for a long-term replacement for Iker Casillas, and United were set to lose arguably their best player at the time. Fortunately for the Red Devils though, fate was on their side, and the official paperwork was not submitted in Spain before the deadline, meaning all deals were off. De Gea and Navas stayed put, and Man United's number one signed a new long-term deal with the club less than two weeks later. Next up we've got Leandro Damiao. There was a sense of excitement around White Hart Lane in January 2013, as Tottenham were linked with a deadline day move for Brazilian striker Leandro Damiao, much to the buzz of players of football manager in FIFA, who must have thought they were going to win the Premier League with signing Damiao. Such was the man's talent on the video games. Such as life at Spurs, Daniel Levy wouldn't stump up the money Internacional wanted for the striker, reportedly offering £18 million, while the Brazilian club wanted closer to £20 million for their man. With the added complications of third party ownership, Levi said thanks but no thanks and decided to wait until the summer to strike again, clearly not wanting the hassle of a late night. Damiao would join Santos in late 2013 and had spent most of his time away on loan, rarely finding the net. A bullet dodged for Spurs. Next up we've got Charles and Zogbia. Newcastle were in a state of panic on January transfer deadline day in 2011, with talisman and top scorer Andy Carroll heading to Liverpool for £35 million, leaving the Magpies with little time to reinvest their money and replace their number 9. With the clock ticking, Newcastle turned to French winger Charles and Zogbier, who had only left the club two years earlier for Wigan, after Joe Kinnear famously called him Charles Insomnia. It was too late though and Newcastle's move failed, leaving the Geordies to stay up all night and ponder where their goals were going to come from. They would later sign Shevki Kucci on a free, while Nzogby would sign for Aston Villa six months later for £9 million. Next up we've got Dimitar Berbatov. The Bulgarian striker decided that his time at White Hart Lane was over in 2008, with Sir Alex Ferguson eyeing up a move for the forward, much to the displeasure of Tottenham, who launched a complaint against the approaches of the Man United boss. The saga rumbled on until deadline day when a new possible destination for Berbatov emerged in the shape of newly rich Manchester City, who had just been taken over by Sheikh Mansour, who had already brought in Rubinho for a club record £32.5 million that day. They matched Man United's £30 million bid for Berbatov, but it was Man United who won the battle, showing that money wasn't going to close the gap between the two northern sides straight away. Up next we've got Alex Teixeira. Brazilian midfielder Alex Teixeira had been flying for Shakhtar Donetsk, scoring an incredible 22 goals and 15 appearances during the first half of the Ukrainian Premier League season. During the winter break, he was linked with the deadline day move to the Premier League with Liverpool, who had been tracking the Brazilian under-20 international all month, with Klopp keen to add more flair to his side. The two clubs couldn't agree a price for Teixeira, and the window closed with no deal done, meaning the linked Chinese Super League clubs could swoop in and take Liverpool's target, with Teixeira joining Jiangsu Suning for €50 million Euros on the 5th of February 2016. Next we've got Deli Ali. To think in 2015 that Deli Ali was still playing in League One with MK Dons. Fast forward two years and he's one of the top players in the Premier League and an England regular. Would that still be the case if Ali had headed elsewhere on transfer deadline day in January 2015? Well, before Tottenham swooped in late to purchase the MK Dons youngster, Newcastle and Aston Villa were in for the midfielder, with the Magpies looking favourites to secure his signature before loaning him back down south. As the deadline loomed closer, it looked less and less likely that Ali was going to be moving to Tyneside, and of course it was eventually Tottenham who completed the deal. Just imagine if he had signed for Newcastle or Aston Villa. I'm fairly confident in saying that Deli Ali would not be where he is today if he'd made either of those moves. And finally we've got Peter Odenwingi. The most famous deadline day deal that didn't happen, Peter Odenwingi went a totally new length to find himself a new club before the transfer window slammed shut. It was the 31st of January 2012, and with his West Brom future in doubt, Odom Wingy took matters into his own hands. Hugh Biard had a £2 million bid rejected for the striker three days earlier, 
which left Odd and Wingy furious, and on deadline day he drove to Loftus Road to try and force through a move himself. The only problem was, QBR still hadn't had a bid accepted, so the Nigerian was just sat there in the car park, doing nothing. The window closed and there was no deal for Adam Wingy, who then drove back to the Hawthorns and had to apologise for his actions. I wonder if his petrol was on expenses. So those are 7 deadline day deals that didn't happen, let us know of any more in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HIT7s for more great stuff like this.